Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me uh, on this Promise LA page. I sure appreciate you uh, logging in week in and week out as I've uh, appreciated your, your comments and your questions and your and your request for prayers. Um, you know, it, it helps in leading where this series should go next as we still have a few weeks left before we enter into our fall season, amen, and, and hopefully uh, an exciting season for Promise LA. But uh, thank you for joining me once again. I pray that this uh, summer long series is proving to be a blessing to you and, and to others as well. Uh, as you know, we've sort of entered into the last leg of our summer series uh, as we, w we entered into the summer with uh, preparing for vision, right? Understanding the security of, of God. And uh, we, we spent a few weeks in pursuing vision. And uh, now we are at procuring vision. Amen? Procuring vision. And uh, what does it mean to procure a vision? To procure vision is, is, is actually getting there, but you haven't fulfilled it yet, right? You, you've gotten to a place where you could see your vision unfold. And, and we talked about examples of that, right? The, the man who saved his money working for someone else. And so he, he finally gets to a place where, where he could start his own business, but yet the business uh, of it has not it hasn't shown signs of prosperity or signs of failure he's just there right he, he it, it's it's like the the student who finished their college degree and getting ready to launch off into their degree and uh, but they're, they're they haven't started yet they're the, no sign of success no sign of failure they're just starting it, it, I think I used this example last week it's it's like when I got out of prison and uh, I was getting to a place where, where I was meeting my parole officer. And my parole officer told me, he's like, you're, you're, you're out of prison, but yet you're not necessarily free. You're still under supervision. We're going to see if you can make it. And I remember telling him, I'll do anything I can to not go back to prison. And he says, you know, the, we'll, we'll just see how that works out for you. See, the time of procuring vision is just the beginning. You know, as you pers as you prepared, as you as as you pursued, procuring is just the beginning towards. Um, it's a beginning towards uh, fulfilling the vision and 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 seeing it through. I I think I shared the scripture with you last week, Philippians chapter three verse twelve, which is not that I have already attained, already perfected, but I press on. The apostle Paul says that. But yet, you know, he's already planted a couple churches by then. You'd think he would have said, okay, I've done this already. I'm good. He says, no, 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 I'm just starting. And that's where you and I are in a lot of ways in this series. We're procuring vision. The, this procurement part, the procuring, um, actually, it, it actually means to obtain something, especially with care and effort. You've obtained it, but yet it's not fulfilled just yet you'll you will find as we as we start this series that procuring vision means more stewardship right taking care of it as like something you cherish and you adore you know some of you know that by by some of the pets right and your children and maybe not in that order I'm sorry but uh, it, it also means strengthening up your management experience I feel myself I'm, I'm in that phase where I'm I want to be strong in, in, in team building and, and taking care of the people that have entrusted me to lead the way. Amen. Teachability. You got to remain teachable here. You can't prepare. You can't pretend like you know it all already because then you will fail. And you got to continue to grow and you got to continue to mature. And that's what I'm hoping this series will allow us to do. Last week we talked about fighting criticism. And you will get criticism wherever you go that's just that's just the truth that's just a fact and so um i i i encourage you to go back and listen to that uh, message last week if you are in a place uh where you're fighting criticism or or you just you just voiced your their vision your the idea um the dream that you have and you're already facing criticism 
that happens it's a natural thing don't think it just happens to you because someone thinks that you're less than the vision that God has for you amen go back and listen to that message last week it's in the archives it costs you nothing go to the page go to the YouTube page of the promise Los Angeles and listen to that what does it mean fighting criticism and 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 Jesus gives us some great examples today today we're going to talk about understanding what alignment means what is alignment you know that's where alignment is where a lot of a lot of uh, uh, parts work together to get you to a certain direction right it, it, if, if you are uh, the visionary if you are the person with the vision as we said in messages earlier in the in this summer series uh, a God-given vision is always a shared vision you will always have to share it with others you're always going to need people to come alongside with you even Jesus had 12 disciples amen even even the Apostle Paul uh, uh, had Silas and and he even said that that Luke who, who he thought was worthless said he is good for me in the ministry we're going to need to share vision and if, if that means if you're sharing the vision you are the leader you are what I consider the visionary leader amen you're not just a leader but you're the visionary leader you're not leading under somebody else's vision you're leading according to the vision in which God has given you and when you are doing that you have to make sure everything is in alignment we all know what alignment means right you know some of us uh, drive vehicles that uh, that that we're, we're doing well for for a while and some of us had bought vehicles in the past that that all of a sudden you think that you can drive by itself that our alignment is so is so good but after a while the parts that were made and engineered to work well in your vehicle it, it's a strange phenomenon to to automo automobile engineers it's like it's as if the parts that were made and engineered to work together all of a sudden they work against each other I, I mean that's that's the the the, the if you physic physically speaking as, as according to physics that's what happens to the parts that they, 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 they were made and engineered to work together but now they work against each other and if you are a visionary leader a lot you will experience this more than you will want to experience you will see people work against each other that once worked well with each other and can I tell you this to encourage you some of you are already experiencing this don't take it as an indictment on your leadership abilities if anything it's a compliment to your leadership abilities because there will be those who just say you know what I've grown enough in this ministry that I believe God is calling me elsewhere and I've been one of those I I, I was under another pastor here in Ontario and and who I love very much and and all of a sudden that I knew that God was calling me elsewhere that I started to move elsewhere and 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 my bents and my behaviors were a little bit different from his and it it was hard because I really wanted to fall under him and and serve him faithfully but it's just some things that that God had put upon my heart that I couldn't um, that, that I, I couldn't ignore amen and so um, you know some of those things happen don't let that discourage you as a matter of fact again it, it's not a it's not a uh, indictment on your leadership it's not an indictment on your vision it's more of a compliment to it so it's going to happen and so a, as a visionary leader you will have to manage through this time during during this time of procurement you know let me tell you something there are two reasons why misalignment occurs one is is just normal use that's what happens parts get old they wear out they they start to behave and do things that they they weren't made and engineered to do that's just what happens that's why you always got to take your car in to get realigned right it, it happens the same way with the with the people that you're 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 leading you know people get distracted because life gets distracting you know things change they lose their passion they lose their passion that's just part of what it is right they develop, they develop their own agendas, just like what I said. 
and, and, and they adhere to life changes. You know, uh, I, I knew of one who, who was passionate about children's ministry. Why? Because her, her, her children were, were in the children's ministry. And she wanted to raise her children uh, in the love and the admonition of God. And she thought this was a great way to do it, and she got involved. But when her children got older, all of a sudden the passion was gone. The, there's life changes that happens. Is that selfish? I don't think so. It's just a natural way of things happen. And, and as the, the visionary leader, you, you have to be able to, to manage through it. You have to be able to, maybe some things that you have to do. One thing is that see it, see it in advance that it's going to happen. And then you start managing and saying, well, you talk to that leader and you say, who's going to replace you one day when, 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 when you decide to move on? And people will move on. Amen. It just happens. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a, it's a normal, natural use of, of people under your leadership. The second thing that happens is because of a bad jolt, right? A bad jolt in life. As it pertains to a, a vehicle, it's like hitting a pothole. We all know what hitting a pothole does to a vehicle. It knocks your vehicle right out of alignment. Amen? You know, whereas normal use is gradual over time, a jolt can be sudden. It, it could change the, the trajectory of your life. And w which, which your challenge is that just because life changes and jolt happens doesn't mean the vision, the vision has to change. For example, a son and daughter get uh, 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 a son or a daughter gets I I injured in playing sports and and the vision goes from being a coach to being a caregiver you know a man could go out there and says you know what I, I want my son or I want my daughter to play uh, you know in, in organized sports maybe be a be a professional um, you know to be a, a, a professional player one of these days you know and and all of a sudden they do well and and, 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 they, and they start to pursue this thing with great success. But yet they, yet they become a coach rather than a parent. And they started off well with saying, you know what, I want to raise them up well. And I want to raise them up in the love of admi and admonition of God. Yet when they show talents of sports, all of a sudden they say, you know what, they got to go to play sports. Because there, there is a future there. And I don't blame you. Especially with college tuition these days, those things can help. But yet, don't let stuff like that skew your vision. A best example that I've ever heard of this is George W. Bush after 9-11. If you know your, your, your history back in those days, while George W. Bush was campaigning, he talked about, he talked about the economy. He talked about uh, foreign policy. He talked about giving people a second chance. He talked about all these different things. But he never knew what it was like to be a wartime president. When 9-11 happened, we had to go to war. And he had to be the leader that led us into that. But yet, what happened? His, his, his attention skewed to being a wartime president as opposed to be a, a reformer of policies that would affect our co economy. The vision changed. And for you and I, for you and I to be an effective visionary leader and to see our vision come to fulfillment we need to know how to manage through these situations well you can ask me pastor daniel how do we do that then well there's a passage of scripture that i think jesus gives us some some uh some great points and uh the lord had laid this upon my heart this past week and i thought wow what a great way a great message for me to deliver in regards to understanding alignment amen to understanding alignment if you have your bibles with you let's go to matthew chapter 12 verses 22 to, to 30. matthew chapter 12 verses 22 to 30. um if you're listening to this on a recording you can pause and then go get your bible or or if you have your bible app or if you have your bible in front of you join me there if you would matthew chapter 12 verses 22 to 30. um Beginning with verse 22, I'm going to read it in context and we'll go, we'll go into it, okay? But in Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 to 30, the Bible says this, Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, 
blind and mute, and he healed him, so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? And then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Yes, I know that's a lot. Amen. That is a lot. But as we as we unpack this passage, we're going to know three things about that would help us in understanding alignment and what to do when these normal things that happen or when these sudden uh, changes in life start to occur. How do we manage to keep things in alignment? In this passage of scripture, Jesus uh, was conducting a task according to a vision that he had for his ministry, right? And we know about what it means to, we saw that in, in, in Isaiah chapter 40, where he had come to, to preach the, the gospel to the, the kingdom of God, to the poor, and to open the eyes of the blind, and to, to, to minister to those uh, who need ministry to. And that's what he's doing. He's serving the kingdom. He's ministering to the people. He's delivering the demon possessed. He's healing the sick. He's making the mute speak. And all of this has been found in verse 22. And, and here's, let me, let me kind of little take a little sidestep just so you know. When God has anointed you to be leader, here's two things I want you to, to recognize. People recognize his leadership. Amen? The, the Bible says in verse 23, could this be the son of David? They recognized him. Amen? They recognize who the, the leader is. Here's what I want you to know. That spirit, the Holy Spirit, will always bear witness with the spirit of others. Amen? That, that you are the anointed leader. Anointing understands anointing. Vision will always liken to vision. If the people recognize Jesus for who he is, people will recognize who you are as the anointed leader, as the anointed visionary. Don't worry about, oh, they're not recognizing me. I feel all insecure. Don't be insecure. Like the first part of our of our summer series, you have security in Christ. Amen? Little sidebar here. There will always be someone or something that tries to drive a wedge in your alignment. Bringing division, bringing accusation, and bringing, bringing confusion. That's just the way it works. Some aren't necessarily... Um, you know, it's not their intention to do it that way. It just happens, right? But but here's the thing. How did Jesus deal with it? How, how did Jesus deal with, with, with uh, things that pertain to normal use, things that pertain to uh, uh, the, the sudden jolt, right? The potholes in life. You know, how did he deal with these things? What did Jesus do? There's three things in this passage of scripture as we go through this I want you to know. Amen? Three things. Um, before we do that, let's go to God in prayer. Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks and praise. Bless us this time, we pray, as we come to you, Lord God, uh, committing to you, blessing you, Lord God, acknowledging you as our Lord and Savior. Lord God, I pray for your anointing. I pray, God, for your, for your guidance and direction here. Once again, I pray that you would hide me behind the shadow of the cross. Let it be that you would increase and that I would decrease. Let it be, dear Father God, that, that you would use me as your mouthpiece, Lord. Hide me behind the shadow of the cross once again, I pray. And, and let it be, Lord God, that after we're done here, we would know that we had a fresh encounter with you. 
I give you praise, Lord. Thank you for loving us the way you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Three things, really quick. Amen. One, utilize logical, biblical insights. Logical, biblical insights. God gave you a revelation out of his word when 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 you when you became a visionary when he when he revealed to you the uh, his god-given vision for you god gave you revelation out of his word when you spend time with him it should be somewhat logical to you right now amen let me let me show you what i mean um when jesus knew their thoughts verses 25 and 26 he said to them every kingdom divided against himself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How off, How then will his kingdom stand? In other words, when, when Jesus was accused of using the power of Satan, of the powers of darkness, the powers of the devil, Jesus looked at their argument and he says to them, and he says to the people, does that make sense to you? Really? Do you hear their argument? Does that make sense? The what they're saying and, and, and how they're trying to convince you? Does it make sense? That the devil casting out demons as a service to the devil? The devil's going to try to defeat himself using his own, his own power? You know? And that's like saying, you know what? For, for, for guys that ride a Harley... That they want to go put Honda out of business by go buying a Honda. Does that make sense to you? See, some things should be logical. Some things that we as believers, we need to think through. Does that make sense? Is that in accordance to the Word of God? Is that in accordance to His will for me? Does that make sense? When people come in accusations, see, I get them all the time. I get them on Facebook. I get them personally. When people say things about me, and I'm confident that that they are that's not true. Oh, they can believe that, but it doesn't mean it's true. Amen. And when when people say, "Oh, this is what the Bible says," I, I'm I'm pretty good at what the Bible says. I'm not an expert by any means. But hey, if I don't have an answer, I know where to go look for an answer. Or at the very least, I know people around me that can give me a good answer as well. Amen. And so you got to ask yourself: Is what they're saying? Does that make sense? See, here's what I want to tell you. When people will come, and, and by normal use, that the people that were used to be made and engineered to, to, to work with you, but now work against you, right? That's misalignment, right? All of a sudden, they will come and, and, and challenge vision. They will come and they will say, I, I, are we staying true to that? Are we doing the right things? Is this church, is it feeding me? Is this church, is it... Is it doing right according to the will of God? And, and, you know, all these things will come against, and they will come against your vision, whether directly or indirectly. Is this is this right? Is this? I don't know about this. I think I'll go someplace else because this doesn't seem right. And in a sense, they're they're coming against vision because this your 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 what you're doing is, is is the vision that God has given you. They will attack the integrity of the vision. They will attack the, uh, uh, their implementation of the vision like saying, you know what, there's better ways to do this. They'll question the source. Really? Has God really said this? That, which is really what the serpent told Eve in the garden, right? Is the methodology right? I think we ought to do it a different way. I know a better way, right? Uh, we'll, we'll, is, 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 this, is this vision worthy? See, that's how church plants, church splits right that's how division happens if uh, let me tell you something church if, if someone is telling you this based off of this is it is, is it really from god is the methodology correct is it really worthy that's the vision that does not come from god that does not come if you're hearing those things run amen run like you've never run before because that is that is not from god but when it does happen the visionary leader will always need to answer. And the answer will always need to make sense. Is it according to, to the vision? Is it consistent with the vision that, that you had first planted in people? 
the people that help you plant, the people that, that led, and later on, the people that join you, whether it's a business, whether it's a, a, a philanthropy group, whether it's a church, whatever it may be, the people that join you, you're going to have to um, repeat and, and, and um, continue to uh, share this vision over and over again. Don't be thinking that, okay, I've shared it, they bought into it, I'm good. It doesn't work that way. You, and, and, it, and, and it helps you too. Amen? It helps you as well. See, we here at Promise LA, we have a, a mission statement. We have a vision for Promise LA. And I am constantly looking through, is what we plan on doing, is the plan that we set out, is what is the vision that God had given us? Is it according to the vision that God had given us? You know, the ones that I had shared in our in our in our first meeting uh, back in the summer of 19 I'm sorry not 2019 amen is it is it that is it is it um, can things change of course they can change because people change but we need to stay consistent with vision this is what we're, we're what God has given us to do and we want to be able to accomplish that vision amen and so you know I find myself always wanting to go back into that and saying, you know what, is this what we're doing? Is this what we're saying? Have I forgotten anything? And so we, I keep going back to that. And so I encourage you to do the same thing. Isaiah 41, 21, present your case, says the Lord. Bring forth your strong reason, says the King of Jacob. It almost sounds like a court case, amen? It, it sounds like it, and, and sometimes it should be. Because when you're in a court case, you, you prepare more. Your diligence is, is a little bit more in depth. And you need to fine tune that, you know. It helps you keep the vision fresh, and it's also a barometer for you, um, and whether or not you're fulfilling vision. You know, when I when I first uh, bought into a church, I didn't buy like purchase it, but but I was totally committed to the church in which I served in in Las Vegas. I, I heard the pastor one of the first messages say, "He says, guys, I'm I gotta apologize to you." Because we came in with a different vision and we skewed off. And I'm making a vow to you, we're getting back on track. First of all, I bought into it because I, I admire somebody when they're wrong. I really do, when they can they admit it. But secondly, there's nothing wrong with recommitting to it. If you've lost your way, get back on track. That's where grace comes in, amen? Secondly, um, walk in your authority. When, 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 when you, you understand um, the, the, logical, the logic, logical biblical principles for you, walk in that authority. Verses 28 and 9, Jesus says, But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has to come upon you. And how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? And then he will plunder his house verse 28 where it says casting out demons surely the kingdom of God comes upon you see that's what happens when we gave our life to Jesus when we understood that Jesus Christ came into this world to die on the cross for our sins to pay our sin debt amen to pay a debt that we could not pay and and he took on a debt that he did not owe he it, it was an exchange system right because he, he paid the price of death on the cross, you know, he, he cast out everything that, that was uh, about us, the, everything that, was, that we live, they once lived according to, amen? He, he, uh, he, he cast out the influences and the power of the devil that had us shackled in sin and death, and he set us free. Eight, John 8.36 actually says that whom the Son has set free is free indeed amen and see when that happens there is grace there there is power there there's authority there power over sin death and the devil power to proclaim and power and authority to proclaim the kingdom of God the gospel of Jesus Christ authority to live out the our purpose in Christ that phrase, the kingdom of God has come upon you, actually denotes authority. How much, how much of the kingdom of God can you have without having authority, uh, walking authority in your life? Do you remember Adam? 
in the in book of Genesis 2 20 where the Bible says that he was giving authority to name all the animals and everything else and that there wasn't anything named that Adam didn't name that means if he didn't name it you didn't get one you didn't get a name that's how much authority he had today that pertains to us as well by purpose and our authority that we have authority will always be linked to the purpose and the vision which God has given us amen you need to understand that as we continue to pursue and procure vision let me let me demonstrate a little bit more um, in the Bible first Timothy 4 12 the Apostle Paul the church planter the missionary tells Timothy who is who is the the pastor of the church in Ephesus he says look let no one despise your youth See, Timothy was the leader in the in the, the Ephesian church, a huge church. And he had a church that was responding to him because he was young. Like, man, how are you going to tell me how to live? You're a little wet behind the ears, don't you think? You know, what do you know in the first place? What do you know about me? How are you going to speak into my life when you barely lived the life yourself? Right? You know, that that's, that's what a lot of people say when you're young in the ministry. I, I've kind of heard some of that stuff myself. But Paul knew that Timothy had a calling on his life, that Timothy had a vision that God had given him. And he admonishes Timothy. He's like, hey, when that happens, just be an example. In word, in deed, in love, uh, you know, just be an example, exercising your authority. Don't let anybody despise your youth. Don't let anybody tell you that you have no authority in him. He was a leader of that fellowship, and he did not, he didn't, uh, uh, need to back off from the vision that the Lord had given him. Amen. As you pursue and you procure vision, there will always, always be people who are older than you, with more experience, with more years, with more knowledge. But don't let that deter you. They will, they will discourage you sometimes, maybe not intentionally. They will despise you sometimes because you're the uh, leader again leaders uh, recognize leaders spirit recognize uh spirit amen anointing recognizes anointing and when people start to recognize you as their leader some will despise that and lastly let me do this really quick i'm running out of time um promote unity no matter what promote unity there's often going to be times when people are going to come against you and it's going to be it's going to be a response to to, to lash back. Don't do that. Promote unity. Verse 30 says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Um, what is unity? When I say promote unity, Judges 20 11 says this, So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, united together as one man. Nehemiah 8 11 says this, uh, and the people were gathered together as one man. That's unity. How did they come together like that? I mean, there had to be some differences of opinion. There had to have been some different uh, uh, experience of life that, that created people uh, to have different uh, uh, belief systems, right? Psalm 139, 14 actually says that we are wonderfully and beautifully made. You know, that means we're, we're created uniquely, reverently by God. There's no people that are the same. We don't even have the same fingerprint. You know, I have a twin brother in this world. Even he and I don't have the same fingerprint. You know, we're uniquely and beautifully made. You know, and so that means there's going to be differences someplace. But how do we come together as one man? If we're different, if, 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 if we have our own bents, how do we come together that way? There had to be in these cases a sense of community. A sense of leadership there there had to be a sense of cause and, and I and, and believe me, for us that cause is Jesus because greater is he that unites us than he that divides us amen I you know what I love Jesus do is when sometimes I myself can't can't see that I can work with somebody and I feel like okay I'm just gonna I'm just gonna you know go my own way we're just gonna go our own separate ways but then somehow Jesus brings reconciliation 
And all of a sudden, the love that we have for one another is probably greater than the what we had before. You know, we might have some differences, but under Jesus Christ, we can indeed work together. Amen? We don't always have to agree about the church decor, the decorations, uh, what we're doing there. We don't have to agree on how we're progressing uh, and what that used to look like at a certain time. We don't have to agree on politics, church. Get this, we don't have to agree on which side of the aisle you are on. But the truth of the matter is, there is some things what you can do to promote unity. One, one, is the, there's no compromise in the essentials. What are the essentials, Pastor Daniel? Faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone for the salvation of your soul. That, that's, a not, that's an essential. Anyone that comes against that, the Bible actually says, don't even let them in your house. Amen. Don't have anything to do with them. Don't be in fellowship. Can you try to reach out to them? Of course you can. But they shouldn't be in fellowship with you under a church gathering because they, they the, you know, the Apostle Paul dealt with that himself. Uh, secondly, grace in the non-essentials. There's some people that are going to believe in, in doctrines like speaking in tongues, doctrines like is it the rapture of pre-trib, post-trib, or mid-trib. There, there are doctrines about the necessity of different gifts and uh, once saved, always saved. There's grace there, okay? You, you, can, you can have grace there. Grace in the non-essentials, but then the unity above all. The Bible says to, to seek peace and pursue it. As much as it's up to you, be at peace with all men. Amen? <coughs> be at peace with all men. 1 Corinthians 1.10 now I plead with you, Paul says, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, and that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. See what he says? You speak the same thing. No divisions among you. Perfectly joined together. <coughs> same mind and same judgment. Oh, yeah. The churches may may do it <coughs> differently. Businesses may have better revenue. Other organizations could, could yield better results. But go with what God gave you. Because then God will bring people around you that will see you to the end. Amen? <coughs> Maybe you're one of these visionary leaders. And you are just getting discouraged by the results. You feel people are leaving you. You feel that other people are doing things better. And you're like, what do I do? I think Jesus gives us a good roadmap. Use the logic for biblical insights. <coughs> Promote unity. Amen? Promote unity. And understand, understand this alignment that's a part, that's a part of this vision. Things will happen, but there's other things that you can do to, to keep things aligned together. And it's the same thing that Jesus did. Today, I want to pray for you. Maybe today, maybe today, there's some of you that when we talked about walking in authority, and we talked about how, how uh, when Jesus casts out demons that in your life, the, the kingdom of God has come upon you. <coughs> The way he has come upon you is by Jesus Christ. Amen. The way the kingdom has come upon you is by Jesus Christ. And that's the only way for you to get out of what you're getting into. Maybe today you've never given Jesus Christ your heart. You, you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior. You never, you never um, asked him to forgive you of your sins. Perhaps today is the day. The Bible says today is the day of your salvation. Will you accept him today? For those of you who are discouraged in your vision and everything else, I want to pray with you, but I want to take care of this business first. Because I, I, if you're following me, you know I never fail. I, I, I never fail to, for people to give their lives to Jesus, and I, I don't want to do that now. So for those of you who are listening to this message on YouTube or here on Facebook Live uh, or on any of the other pages, uh, will you pray with me? If this is you, say, Dear Lord Jesus, 
I confess that I am a sinner. I have broken your law. I have, I have rebelled against you. I have gone my own way. Please forgive me. As today, I confess that you came into this world, and I believe you came into this world, to die on the cross for my sins. It's there where you, you, you bled and you gave up your life for me. But yet on the, on the third day, you came out, the, out of that tomb, resurrected and alive. And because you live, I can live also. I, I ask you to give me your Holy Spirit. As today, I confess Jesus Christ to be my Lord and my Savior. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Many have asked, Pastor Daniel, is it really that simple? It really is that simple. It's the start of your journey, but it's really that simple. Just ask Him to come into your heart. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Ask Him to be your Lord and your Savior. Amen? If that is you today and you've given Jesus Christ your heart, you prayed that prayer with me. You prayed that prayer with me. And you say, Lord, I, I, I've, I've given you my life and it's yours. It was always yours, but now I'm recommitting my life back to you. If that is you, can you do me a favor? Can you put in the comment section, Pastor Daniel, that was me. I prayed that prayer with you today. Um, or if you're you're listening to this on YouTube uh, or some other outlet, um, put it on there. Uh, you could you, you could uh, uh, go to my email at promiselosangeles at gmail dot com, promiselosangeles at gmail dot com. I I, I want to send you some material. I want to send you a Bible. Um, I want to be a resource for you because if you uh, are starting your walk, you are going to have some questions, and that is okay. Okay? That is okay. So so I want to be a resource for you. I want to be able to, to ask any, answer any questions that you might have, and uh, and we will go from there. Amen? So do that for me if you would. And, uh, and again, if you are listening to this on YouTube, go to promiselosangeles at gmail.com and say, Pastor Daniel, I prayed that prayer with you. Amen. Uh, for those of you, the visionary leaders, I want to pray for you today. Um, don't be discouraged. This is natural. Amen. And understand that God who, who sent you people in the first place will always be faithful to see your vision through. Can I pray for you today? Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I lift up all these other visionary leaders to you right now their hearts, their minds. Some are on the verge, Lord, of just turning back and saying, I'm going to go do something else. But, oh God, give them the grace to go the distance. Give them the grace to persevere through. Be with them. Strengthen them, dear Father God. Reveal to them, dear Lord God, that, that indeed you have a promise for their lives. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I bless your name. For each one that are listening to the sound of my voice, lift them up and encourage them, Lord. I pray, God, that they would understand that you're still in charge and that they would let you continue to lead, guide, and direct in all that they're doing. Bless them, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Um, for those of you, if there's anything I could do for you, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, for those of you uh, that, that need prayer, uh, join us Thursday nights at a prayer meeting. If you would like to do that, look out for some announcements that are uh, on these pages that will show you how you can log on on Zoom and join us online for uh, uh, for Thursday night prayer meeting. I will be happy to pray with you. If you need anything, then I w let me know, and I would be happy to help you if I can. Okay? God bless you. Have a great week, and I hope to see you soon. God bless.
Hello? Hey, is he still out there? 